is Las Vegas really a desert? Well, stay tuned, because we are gonna be talking about this very commonly Googled question right now in today's video. I'm gonna go over everything about living in Las Vegas, the climate, the weather, is it really a desert? We're gonna talk about everything on this list right here, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you throw them down in the description. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. My name's Tom, and I help people move to Las Vegas, and with that, let's get started with this video so you can learn everything about Las Vegas climate, weather, and most importantly, is Las Vegas a desert? So first, I just wanna define a desert, and don't worry, this isn't gonna be a long, boring definition. Wikipedia defines a desert as barren landscape where little vegetation grows. Britannica online, uh, any large, extremely dry area with sparse vegetation. By that definition, Las Vegas uh, is essentially a desert, right? You, we don't have a lot of big, lot of big sand dunes like the Sahara Desert uh, or like you know some Matthew McConaughey movie that takes place in the desert or something like that. We don't have a lot of that here, but by those definitions, Las Vegas is definitely a desert. In fact, Las Vegas actually sits within the boundaries of the Mojave Desert. Uh, so if you want a specific classification of what desert Las Vegas is actually in, it's the Mojave, which encompasses a lot of the desert Southwest here in the United States. Next, I just want to define climate. Climate is defined as the long-term pattern of weather in an area. Weather is real short-term stuff. Climate is gonna be your long-term weather patterns, what happens over a long period of time, days, weeks, months, years, etc. Now, probably the most important thing to talk about as far as Las Vegas and it being a desert is how hot it gets in Las Vegas. So I'm not gonna tell you the numbers, but I am gonna throw up a chart on the screen so you guys can kind of read through that, pause the video, read through, figure out some average monthly temperatures here in the Las Vegas Valley. But let me tell you guys from personal experience, yeah, it gets hot. That's kind of what Las Vegas is famous for. Gambling, casinos, food, you know, just all around craziness, but also the desert heat that absolutely bakes this landscape every single summer, bakes Phoenix, bakes San Diego, bakes all part of the Southwest. So guys, Las Vegas is famous for that. So yeah, it definitely gets hot. Next up, let's talk about rainfall, guys. I moved here from the East Coast, so I was used to a lot of rain every single year, you know, like multiple days a week, storms in the summer, that sort of thing. You're definitely not gonna find that in Las Vegas, guys. I'll put up another chart with the average rainfall by month, but let me tell you, it's less than an inch for every single month of the year. Even in the rainy season, uh, which is like August, September, August, July, something like that. Even in the rainy season, you really don't get a lot of rain here in Las Vegas, no matter where you live, no matter what part of the city. I will say the western part of the city gets seems to uh, get more rain. I kind of live in the central or like cent central eastern part of the city, and I often, uh, you know, when rain does hit, I see more rain clouds on the west side of the city, closer to the mountains. So if you're moving here and you want to maximize the amount of rain you get, I definitely recommend you live on the west side of the city, not the east because the west side has a lot of larger mountains and that seems to affect the weather and cause more rain to fall in that area. But like I said, less than an inch of rain every single month. But good news is, guys, if you're moving here and you like snow, I know, right? Why would you move to Las Vegas if you like snow? But stay with me, guys. Las Vegas actually uh, gets snow, not like the main valley area, but the Mount Charleston and the Spring Mountains area, the Red Rock, National Conservation Area, all those different areas get snow every single year. And they get so much snow, there's actually a ski resort, Lee Canyon Ski Resort, uh, in the Spring Mountains up in Mount Charleston, which you can actually live in. So guys, make sure if you wanna live in Mount Charleston, go check out some of my other videos on Mount Charleston pros and cons, and hopefully I'll be putting out some more of those soon. If you wanna see more videos on Mount Charleston, comment down below. Anyways, so Lee Canyon, actually has its own ski resort and they get a ton of snow every year. I'll throw up a chart right now so you can see kind of the average snowfall uh, in the Mount Charleston area based on the month. The Las Vegas Valley, of course, it's too hot. It really, we don't get snow. I think like last year or two years ago, I woke up and there was like snow just on the shingles of my house and every other house in the neighborhood, a few, some other houses in the valley, depending on where you lived in the valley. Uh, but you can expect to see snow on the surrounding mountains, but if you live in the valley, don't expect to get any snow other than like a tiny dusting maybe one day a year. Because there's really no rain here or no significant rain, Las Vegas is also pretty lax on plant life. Now, plant life depends upon where you live in the city. If you live in Green Valley Ranch, Henderson, you know, it's called Green Valley for a reason. The people who built that community put a lot of emphasis into green plants, 
a lot of water flowing around, all that sort of stuff. But if you live in maybe a non-HOA community, an older community, or maybe an outer edge community, uh, like I do up here in North Las Vegas, you're definitely not gonna get as much vegetation. You're not gonna have nearly as much green. If you really want green, your best bet is to move up to Mount Charleston, where at higher elevations, they get that snowfall, they get more rainfall every year, and they actually have trees. I know, right? Trees in Las Vegas, crazy. They actually have trees, they have more wildlife, which we'll talk about that later. Um, but you, your best places for green are like your luxury communities, areas of Summerlin, some areas of Henderson, just communities that you know you maybe you'll have to pay a little extra to get into, but that money goes towards landscaping, more water features, that sort of thing. Um, other than that, there's really no way to get a lot of green into your life in Las Vegas unless you leave the cities and climb up for the mountains uh, for like a day trip or the weekend or something like that. And like I said, that's just because there's really no rain here, so a lot of plant life can't be sustained. As far as natural plant life that you will find here in Las Vegas, you're gonna see a lot of sagebrush, a lot of small, you know, jaggedy, wiry bushes, that sort of thing, Joshua trees starting at a little bit of higher elevation. And then of course, up at Mount Charleston, up the like six, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 feet, you're gonna have your big trees, you're gonna have pine trees. Um, all sorts of other types of trees, wildlife, a lot of wildflowers up on Mount Charleston as well, especially the peaks, they get a lot of wildflowers. So like I said, if you want more grass, you're definitely gonna have to live at that higher elevation um, or just you know really add a lot of features to your home that allow more vegetation to, to grow in those areas. Finally guys, for all you animal lovers out there, let's talk about the animal life that you're gonna find in Las Vegas that is directly connected to the climate. Now we have already covered the fact and proven the fact that Las Vegas is absolutely a desert with low rainfall, uh, you know, a lot of sun, high heat, all that sort of stuff. Because of this, you're only gonna find very few animals actually living in the Las Vegas Valley. You're gonna find a couple different species of rabbits, uh, of course, plenty of species of birds because they have access to fly around, fly to water, you know, eat all the food out of McDonald's parking lots. A lot of pigeons in Las Vegas, guys. You'll find some birds, you'll find a lot of rabbits, you'll find coyotes, scorpions, spiders, that sort of stuff that you're gonna find uh, you know, pretty much everywhere. But as you move up in elevation towards Mount Charleston, you're gonna find wild horses, wild burros, you're gonna find mule deer, elk, bighorn sheep of several different varieties, and you know just all kind of larger animals badgers skunks all sorts of stuff that is able to live at those higher elevations because there's more rainfall there's more green there's more plant life there's more food for the herbivores you'll also find mountain lions and sometimes it's actually not that uncommon to find mountain lions actually in the valley floor uh, because they come down and unfortunately they go after pets which are really easy prey because uh, the climate here a lot of people like to sleep their pets you know outside because it gets cool at night and the mountain lions will come down from the surrounding mountains and prey on those pets. So that is something you want to keep tabs on if you do live on the western edge of the city especially. Maybe don't leave your pets out at night, uh, otherwise mountain lion might find your way into your yard and eat your dog, which I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody, especially not my dog. So guys, you know, pay attention to that. But those are the kind of animals you're going to find here that are directly connected to the climate. Uh, so remember guys, before you move here, make sure you consider the plant life, the animal life, the rainfall. Las Vegas is a desert, it's hot. If you can't deal with that heat, if you can't deal with low humidity environments, maybe stick away from Las Vegas. Uh, maybe you know move to California or some other part of the country where uh, there's more rainfall, more humidity, that sort of stuff. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're moving to Las Vegas, please reach out to me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, I'm getting reach outs all the time, and I love helping people buy and sell real estate here in Las Vegas. If you have any more questions or comments, please put them down in the description below or reach out to me directly. And as always, if you have an idea for a video, please send it to me because I love to do videos inspired by the people who are actually watching them. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.